Hey everybody, welcome back to Decode Tech. Hope you are doing well. So in our video on modules, we talked about how people can make modules for other people to use, whether it be for networking, or maybe for building websites, or building games, or what have you. But how do other people actually use these modules? Well, it turns out there's a website that they call a repository. In other words, it's a place where it holds all these modules, and it's called PYPI or PyPI. And pretty much anybody can upload modules to PyPI, but it is a bit of a process and that's out of the scope of this video. So this will simply be getting modules from PyPI. So I'm gonna to head to my web browser and I'm gonna type in pypi.org. Notice .org, not .com, hit enter. And modules that are put on PyPI are referred to as packages. And so that's what I was referring to a little bit ago when I said it can be difficult to get modules onto PyPI. They have to be put into what are called packages. Now here you can search for a specific module you want or search for the category of a module you want. So I happen to know there's one called Easy GUI. So I'm just gonna type in Easy GUI and I'm gonna go with the top result here. Now this page will tell you a bit about the project description and even show you a little bit of an example of the usage of this module, as well as the most exciting part, the license information. Okay, but enough about that for now. Now, how do we actually get these packages off of PyPI? Well, Python, since Python 2.7.9 and 3.4 come with something called PIP. Now, PIP is a program and PIP is an acronym for PIP installs packages. Now, if you don't have anything higher than the Python versions I mentioned, I really do recommend you get on those versions or higher if at all possible especially getting away from Python 2 if possible because that's gonna be deprecated soon. If you do have to use an older version, there is still ways to get PIP working, but it's not worth it unless you absolutely have to have an older version. So how we're gonna use PIP is from the command line. Now there are graphical user interfaces for using PIP, but I think it's really easy from the command line and there's so many other developer tools that are built for the command line that you might as well get used to using the command line. And it's really not that scary once you get used to the feel of it. So I've opened up command prompt. And so just like you type in Python to run a Python program or Python by itself to launch the interpreter and hit enter, you can also type in pip and hit enter. Now this will give out a scary looking amount of output, but it's really just describing different things you can do with pip. Um, I'm just gonna clear the screen for now. Now if you got pip is not a recognized command, all that means is you haven't added pip to your environment variable path. And I showed you how to do that when installing Python on Windows. If you have the versions of Python that come with pip, it's still there. You just have to go to where it's located to use it, which is totally fine, but kind of annoying. Now using pip should be the same on Windows and Mac OS, as long as it's on your environment path. If it's not, of course, your folder structure will be different on Mac and Windows, um, but you just have to add it to the path or go to the direct folder that pip is located in. On Windows, it's under the scripts folder in your Python installation directory. So if you go under your explorer and go under your Python directory and then go into the scripts folder, you see pip.exe. So whether you have to go to your scripts folder, the commands will be exactly the same. And one other thing to note is, is if you have two versions of Python installed, if you type Python, it'll normally give you Python 2 by default. And if you type Python 3, it'll give you Python 3 by default. So you also have just pip, which gives you Python 2's pip and pip3, which gives you Python 3's pip. So that's important to note, or it will install the module for the wrong version of Python. So let's start off by seeing what our pip installation has in it by default. So I'm gonna do pip3, just to be safe, space list, which means list the packages that pip has installed. So it keeps track of all the packages you've installed using it. And you see I have one called pip and one called setup tools. Here's the package name and here's the version of that package. I believe those two come by default. So now let's try installing a new one. So I'm gonna do pip3 space install and then space the name of the package. Now I wanna install this easy GUI. So I'm gonna look how it's spelled and then I'm gonna go back to my terminal and type in easy GUI and then hit enter and it'll go and install that right into the right place for you. Now, if you watch my modules video, I said that third-party modules get installed in the site packages folder. So if I open back up File Explorer and go back to the main folder and go under lib and scroll down till I see site packages, and double click on that, you should now see easy GUI folder in there. So now we should be able to use the import command in Python to import this module. The other way to check if it's installed is just do pip3 list again. 
and now easy GUI should be added to your list with the version. So that worked nice. So I'm going to clear the terminal. Now I'm just going to jump into the Python interpreter, make sure you're in the right version. And I'm going to say import easy GUI because it should know to look there by default from the import path that Python has. Now hit enter and now we can import that. Now I have access to all the functions and objects that the easy GUI module has. So let's just look at a short example. So I'll go here to PyPI, and before we look at the example, notice they actually have the command to install the package right here at the top. And you can actually just click this little notepad and it'll copy it to your clipboard, and you can actually paste that right into your terminal and hit enter. Of course, not in the interactive Python mode, but at the main command prompt. But back to looking at an example, you can scroll down, and here it shows you can do something called an MSG box. That stands for message box. And then you can put a string in. Apparently that's like the message that this message box will show, as well as you can put a title to the message box. So it looks like message box is a function inside of the easy GUI module. So let's try that. So I'll bring back up command prompt. And I'll say easy GUI because we want to go into that module and get a function called MSG box. And then it's a function, so I need my parentheses. And I want my message. I'm just going to say hello world, comma, and the title. I'm just going to say Denver's window. And now I'm going to hit enter to run that code. And we're in the interactive shell, so it'll run right away. And there you have it. You have a little window that says hello world with the title of Denver's window. And um, you can already resize it, and you can uh, minimize it, maximize it, exit it, hit OK. And in this case, it returns a string of OK back to the command line. So these are very simple GUIs, and I don't believe you can build very complex GUIs with this, but I just wanted to show you a way that you can work with modules and how they give you a lot of functionality without you knowing how they work behind the scenes. You just know that this has a message box function and somehow or another it builds a window for you and you can plug in your own custom title and text. Later in this Python series, I'm going to show you how to build more complex GUIs with a library called tkinter. And that's actually built right into Python, but it takes a lot more knowledge to be able to work with it. Okay, I'm just going to exit out of the Python interpreter. Now, what if you don't want this module on your system? So pip can also uninstall modules. pip3, instead of install, do uninstall, and then the name of the module, which is easygui. Hit enter, and now it'll tell you what this would remove if it continues, and says proceed yes or no. I'm going to hit Y for yes, hit enter, and now it uninstalled easy GUI. So now I can do pip3 list again. Now easy GUI is no longer in my list. If I go back to my folder and in site packages, easy GUI folder no longer exists. I'm going to clear the terminal and go back into the Python interpreter. I'm going to try to import easy GUI again. And this time I get a trace back saying module not found because it's no longer installed on my system. So I'll exit out of that and clear the screen. And that really is pretty much all there is to installing modules. So pip is what's called a package manager. And throughout the years, the Python community has tried different attempts at different package managers or ways of managing packages. And I think pip is a really easy, nice tool. I remember back when I started to learn programming, I had to manually download the Python modules and put them in the right place so that Python could find them. And that was a real hassle, especially for a beginner. So I hope you found this useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you still have questions or something's not working right, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next one.